What's up mob crew? I'm Chris and in today's video I go over a case that is so strange and bizarre it garnered mass media attention and that is the case of Elisa Lam. This case led to many documentaries being made about her and the hotel she stayed in. I go over her story in today's video. Also, today's missing person case is Joni Bradley from Powhatan, Virginia. She will be featured at the end of my video, so please stay until the end for that. Thank you so much. I will also have a special message for you at the end of the video. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where we cover murder, mystery, to the paranormal. This is Elisa Lamb, a beautiful young college student from British Columbia. She was born on April 30th, 1991. Lamb's family immigrated to Canada, where they opened a restaurant in Burnaby, British Columbia. Elisa Lamb was a student at University Hill Secondary and the University of British Columbia. Lamb decided she wanted to go see other parts of America and would travel to Los Angeles via Amtrak. On January 26, 2013, Lamb checked into the Cecil Hotel, also known as Stay on Main, which is located in downtown Los Angeles near Skid Row. Skid Row is a highly dense homeless population that can be very dangerous for tourists and others due to its high crime and mortality rate. Early in her stay at the Hotel Cecil, guests staying at the hotel said that Lamb was showing signs of odd behavior. Elisa Lamb sadly would be last seen in the hotel on January 31st. Her parents, David and Yinny Lam, who'd been in daily contact with their daughter, had not heard from her, and so they quickly reported her missing. The local law enforcement began their investigation and did an initial sweep of the entire hotel, including the roof, but they could not find Lam or anything suspicious. But since no one had seen Elisa Lam leave the hotel, it is as if she had just vanished. After requesting surveillance footage of the hotel's cameras, the detective scanned through countless hours of footage to finally come across Lamb in the elevator acting very strange. This is the last known footage of Elisa Lamb. The local law enforcement released a clip on February 15th, two weeks after she had been missing. Here is the extended clip of Lamb in the elevator.
There were so many theories early on as to why she was acting the way she was in the elevator and why the elevator was not moving. Many thought someone was controlling the elevator, keeping it from moving, or as if something malevolent was controlling the elevator. It also looked as if she was talking to someone or something when she walks out of the elevator. But one of the most disturbing things was the fact that Lamb was not seen on any other cameras, meaning that she had not left that hotel. And either she had disappeared into thin air, or she was still in that hotel somewhere, possibly being held against her will or worse. As investigators continued their search for Lamb, guests at the hotel began complaining about the low water pressure. Some later claimed that their water was black and had an unusual taste. On the morning of February 19th, almost three weeks since Lamb was seen, Santiago Lopez, a hotel maintenance worker, found Lamb's body in one of the four 1,000 gallon tanks located on the roof that provide water to the guest rooms and other facilities in the hotel. Through the open hatch, he saw Lamb lying face up in the water. The tank was drained and cut open to remove Lamb's body. While waiting for the autopsy results, an investigation into what happened to Elisa Lamb would commence. But one of the biggest problems or confusion in the case was when someone was reportedly quoted saying that the lid was closed when they found Lamb's body, suggesting either she had closed it when she was dropping into the tank, which would have been nearly impossible with how heavy the lid is, or more likely she was dumped in there and was the victim of foul play. This sent online sleuths on a wild hunt for answers but it would later be revealed that this was a mistake and this person misspoke and the lid was actually open when they found Lamb's body. This still hadn't answered the question as to how she managed to get in the tank considering the doors and stairs that access the hotel's roof are locked. With only staff having pass codes and keys and any attempt to force them would supposedly trigger an alarm. The hotel's fire escape would have allowed her to bypass those security measures. Alisa Lamb's scent trail was lost near a window that connected to the fire escape outside. On February 21st, three weeks after Lamb disappeared, the Los Angeles coroner's office issued a finding of accidental drowning with bipolar disorder as a significant factor as she had been prescribed medication for her mental health but many couldn't accept the coroner's finding and believe she had been the victim of foul play, considering she was found naked lying face up in the water tank. Usually drowning victims are found floating face down in the water. Online sleuths started making strange connections, like the major outbreak of tuberculosis in downtown LA and Skid Row community during that time she was visiting the hotel. And strangely, the test for TB that is given was called the Lamb Elise test, which is Elisa Lamb's first and last name reversed. People thought she could have been a biological weapon and had been silenced and dumped in the water tank. Many were curious to know the toxicology report of Lamb believing that she could have been drugged or using in some way to make her act that way she was in the video. This report took until June to be released and the results revealed that there was nothing suspicious in her system. Just low amounts of prescription she was taking which suggested that she stopped taking her medication which could have caused her to have a psychotic episode and caused further depression suggesting she got off the elevator and proceeded to the window that leads to the fire escape and from there, she climbed the ladder to the roof and walked over to the structure and climbed the ladder that would allow her to access the water tanks. And she opened the lid and entered the tank to take her own life. 
One of the biggest questions was solved regarding the behavior of the elevator not moving when she had pressed the buttons to other floors. The reason it did not attempt to change floors when she was frantically pressing all the buttons is the one that she pressed on the bottom row was the open door button which causes the elevator to stay on that floor with the doors open for a certain amount of time. And if Lam was confused and did not realize she had pressed that button, this would have appeared to her as if someone was controlling the elevator and further caused paranoia, explaining her odd behavior as if she was looking for the person doing this. My biggest problem with everything is why would she take off her clothes if she was going to take her own life? And they never did an official essay kit on her. Her parents would later try and sue the hotel for wrongful death, but the case would later be dismissed. One thing is for sure that this would not be the first time something strange has happened at the Hotel Cecil, and one could say it has a very dark history, which I will cover another day on this channel. Please share your thoughts on this case and what you think happened to Elisa Lam. Do you believe the coroner's report? Please smash that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Please click that subscribe button if you are new. Tap that bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. Please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member or by donating to one of the links in the description. Shout out to Carly Ferguson and Cat John for becoming members. Thank you so much. If you are still here and waiting to see who today's missing person case is, then you are awesome. And from now on, the first person I see who puts in the comments the name of the missing person and where they're from, I will pin it at the top and I will give you a shout out in the next video. Today's missing person case is Joni Bradley. She is 16 with colored hair and green eyes. She is from Powhatan. Virginia. She could be heading to Amelia. She went missing on the 9th of November last year. So please take a close look. Please take care of yourself and be sure to tell someone you love them. And as always, I love you all. Thank you.